Okay, so at this point we're going to take a look at the, uh, the adhesive thermometer that we have attached to the side of the, the fermenting bucket. Uh, if you take a look on here, uh, it's coming in right between 75 and 77, probably about 76 uh, degrees. The ideal pitching temperature for your yeast is going to be 76 degree, or 75 degrees. So we're right there, uh, and I don't have any problem with adding yeast to this right now. Okay, well the temperature's right on, so I'm going to go ahead and add our yeast. Uh, today I'm using a, a dry yeast packet that came with my kit. Uh, it's a, 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 strain called, a strain called Nottingham, which is a, a neutral flavored English ale yeast, uh, which will do uh, a really good job on my pale ale. So uh, all I'm going to do here is cut it open uh, with my cleaned, and uh, I actually went ahead and sanitized these scissors just in case. Um, dry yeast is really easy to use. The instructions on the package of the yeast are going to tell you to rehydrate the yeast. Uh, if you're very careful, you can go ahead and do that and your yeast will get off to a slightly faster start than it will if you just dump it in. Uh, but if you just dump it in dried like this, uh, it's going to get fermenting uh, probably within 10 hours, maybe even less than that, which is, which is a great start for your beer. So uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to toss in, uh, toss in this yeast into the uh, into the wort, and I'm just going to let it sit on top for a second. Um, the next stage after you've added your yeast is uh, is called aeration. Uh, aeration is just the process of getting oxygen into the into the wort. Uh, yeast, in order to get a good healthy fermentation, requires oxygen uh, to multiply. So we want to uh, uh, to make sure we get a lot of oxygen in there, and we're going to do that by splashing. Um, uh, vigorously and uh, splashing, foaming uh, after I put the lid on here, uh, off and on probably for about five minutes just to uh, uh, to make sure that uh, we've got lots of oxygen in the work. So I'm going to go ahead and seal this thing up. Okay, and I'm going to start to rock it back and forth. Now, a good uh, a good trick to this would be. Uh, have a tennis ball or something uh, to rock it around, but you can also just lift in a corner and splash. You say I would uh, splash it for a while, go ahead, rest for a little bit, uh, but do this off and on for about five minutes. Okay, I've been uh, aerating for about five minutes. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and peel the lid back. And the last step here is I'm going to take a little sample from for my hydrometer. So I reserved a little bit of the sanitizing solution from earlier uh, to clean my cup. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and dip this in. And get enough work so that I can do a, a hydrometer test to see what my specific gravity was or is and uh, again this will give me an idea uh, give me the ability to track the track the progress of the fermentation and also get an idea of the alcohol content of the finished beer now I've got my uh, the, the sample that I took from uh, from our word over here uh, and I'm going to pour that uh, into the into the uh, into the tube that the hydrometer came in uh, this is going to make a little, nice little test jar for us uh, we also do sell test jars uh, that you can use for this, but uh, but the uh, the jar of the ferment or the hydrometer came in works really well too. Okay, I've got that. Now I'm going to put my hydrometer in there, and we're going to see at what level this hydrometer floats at. And that's going to tell us what our specific gravity is. Sometimes you're going to get a little bit of foam on top here, and that will settle after a while. Um, but uh, right away, even with the foam, you can get a pretty good idea of what your gravity is. Okay, well, you can see our hydrometer is floating at a reading of 1.050. Okay, this uh, at the top is, is the first two numbers of the scale, 1.000. These uh, last two numbers are, are going to be the last two numbers in the scale. So uh, 1.05, eh, maybe even 1.052. Uh, 
uh, which is exactly where this beer should have turned out. We recommend that you do a, a what we call a satellite fermentation uh, in order to, to keep from having to get into your fermenting bucket to repeatedly get samples. What we want you to do is go ahead and keep this initial sample that you did. We already added yeast to it, so this, uh, this little sample is going to start to ferment uh, just, uh, just the same as the, the main batch of beer over here in the, uh, in the fermenter. So uh, in order to save that, what you do, just get a, uh, a bottle of beer. It doesn't have to be sanitized. You're not going to be drinking this. Uh, you're just going to be periodically taking uh, gravity readings of this. So go ahead and take the sample that you drew out before. Go ahead and pour that into your beer bottle. And all you really need to do is uh, you can stick a paper towel in this or cover it up. Um, uh, cover it loosely because you are going to be getting fermenting gases out of this. Uh, if you plugged it tight, it, it might blow up. Blow up. So uh, you do want to make sure the gas can escape. Uh, but you're going to keep this in the same place uh, as your fermenting bucket. And as this ferments, uh, this will ferment too. Uh, periodically, as we recommend in the instructions, go ahead and pour this mixture back into your hydrometer test, test jar uh, and take gravity readings. Um, at this point, the beer is finished. Uh, the lid is on over here. The only thing I haven't done is put the uh, put the airlock into the bucket, and I'm going to do that here in a second. Uh, first, I did get a little bit of wort uh, splashed around the top here, so I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my sanitizing solution. I'm going to wipe that down a little bit, uh, just to, to keep things neat. Uh, now, I've got the airlock that I sanitized before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the sanitizing solution, uh, fill it to about uh, about halfway up. Uh, some some uh, airlocks are, are going to have a line there that you can use, but uh, about halfway is fine. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and put the little middle piece in here. I'm going to put the top on there, and then I'm going to go ahead and slide this into the grommet. Okay, now you're done brewing for today. Uh, all you need to do is find a good spot uh, to keep this fermenter while, it, uh, while the beer ferments inside. Um, what you're looking for is a, a nice place with a steady temperature, uh, ideally between 65 and 75 degrees. Uh, remember the, uh, the wort inside as it ferments, it's going to generate a little bit of heat. So it's going to be, uh, uh, the, the, the fermenting beer is going to be two, three degrees warmer than, than, uh, than the ambient air. So usually a closet works well for this. Um, you know, someplace dark, cool, out of the way. Um, the bucket's going to protect it from light, but sunlight, direct sunlight, and fluorescent lights are are harmful to to the beer as it ferments and are going to give you off flavor. So you want to avoid that. Um, you know, basically just find someplace cool and quiet, and uh, put your satellite fermenter in the same place. Uh, track the fermentation as it goes, and you can leave this alone until it's ready to bottle. Thank <music> you.